Hello, welcome back. As you can see, we're getting there. We're getting near the end, I think. Um, as you can see, we're getting some primer down today. We have had four weeks of pretty much non-stop rain here in the UK, whilst the rest of Europe bathes in a uh, rather extreme heat wave. We're on the wrong side of the Gulf Stream. We're getting low pressure systems off the Atlantic, which means we've just had wind and rain for about four weeks. Which ain't great for driving convertibles, um, and also ain't great for painting. Um, the problem I've got with the painting is this. In order for me to paint, I need to put it here. But as you can see, there's a rather large Chevy G30 in the way, which is going to eventually be a 18 van. Problem with that is the front windscreen and scuttle is completely rotten. So we're in the middle of making a uh, replacement panel for that, which means there's no glass in it. But that needs to go outside. So you see the problem. We don't want to put that outside with the rotten panel in the rain while I spray in here. So we had to wait for a dry day basically to put the old uh, Chevy outside. And she's a bit of a lump. It's not the sort of thing you can just push out like the old Spitfire. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a lump. Um, but anyway, so we had a dry day on the weekend. We managed to get the uh, Chevy outside, bonnet down. We got our high build primer down. And it went on quite nicely, to be honest. Um, we've uh, started sanding it now. So the problem with high build is, well, it's high build. So you can see when you look at it closely, she's got a good texture to her. No matter how wet you make the paint, and I put plenty of thinner in it to get it really nice and thin like milk, it still goes on quite thick with a bit of a texture. You can hear it. it sounds like sandpaper. So we've started going over it with a 400 on the DA, and you can hear that. Sounds like glass. So that's actually going down really nicely. We're just sanding it through. There's almost no issues in the paint whatsoever, which is pretty rare. Um, and it's, yeah, it's sanding up really nicely. So, as you can see, we've done about half of the top. I've got a date with the DA and a pile of 400s. I'm going to cut this back, get it nice and flat, and then I need to go to the paint shop and get some paint mixed up for our top coat. Exciting stuff, top coat time. Okay, she is ready for final paint. Gone over, filled any little pinholes. It's been 400, 800, excuse me, 800 over the entire thing. Gone in by hand on all the little recessed areas and the rest of it's all been flattened out. Lovely. So, we need to top coat it. The paint we're using is the same we used on the body which is a 2K top coat, Triumph paint code 19, which is the old English white. Hopefully it matches. Okay, we've tried to make some space. <clears throat> Chevrolet. It should be panel wiped within an inch of her life. I'm going to go over it a couple more times just to make sure it is nice and clean. And then we're going to get busy with the top coat. Today is the day we get this thing almost wrapped up. Let's go.
Well, that's two coats in. And I don't think that's looking bad. It looks much better on camera. This is what I love about the camera. It looks awesome. See how shiny it looks? I'm not getting you any closer than that. Now go on. I'll show you. It's a little bit orange peely. But, you know, it's not exactly the, you know, pain booth of the century. We do the best with what we got, all right? On the whole, I am pretty pleased. So we've got one cup left. Oh, I've got a run on this side. Oh, dearie, dearie me. That's going to need a buffing out afterwards. But there we go. Of course, the problem with painting, when you put the first coat on, it's fine because you're going white on grey. You can see where you've been. When you do your second coat and you're doing white on white, you can't see where you've been. You do one run, and when you come back, you're hoping you've come off enough to, you know, to do your second run with it like a 50% overlap, but you can't see. And on that side, clearly, I haven't seen, and I've gone too heavy, and I've got a run nip, so that will need to be polished out. But it's going to need to be polished anyway, because, you know, so, whatever. But it's not perfect. It's never going to be. And there she is, back in her rightful place on the tyres. Started peeling the masking tape off and then I bottled it. We'll just leave it alone until it dries properly. Well, I couldn't resist it. I've peeled the masking tape off. I know you shouldn't, but I did. I can't help myself. There's two schools of thought of masking tape, isn't there? You either peel it off wet and you get a nice clean line, or if you peel off when it's dry, sometimes it can crack and come off. So I don't know. Anyway, it came off pretty well. The only problem is the black that I've put on the bumper the tape I used, which was electrical tape, not masking tape, great, has taken some of the uh, black away with it. And as you can see, you can see a little bit of primer underneath it. But that's fine, I'll go over that and I'll repaint that. That's not really an issue. The main thing I wanted to get right was that. And to be fair, that ain't half bad. Even the run on the side here, now it's starting to dry. It's actually touch dry now. That run on the side, you can barely even see it. I'll still polish it out, but you can barely even see it. So that gives you the first look of what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, oh, I've got my chrome strip as well. Where's that? There it is. So it's like the 3M strip, 50 mil wide, or 2 inches in freedom units, and uh, about 2 meters wide, which should be enough to do all of it. It has got a uh, plastic coating on, as you can see there, and if you peel the plastic coating off, try to do it with one hand, Badly. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty chrome underneath. It's very hard to get something chrome that isn't chrome. And that will then become the bumper inlay. Black on the edges, chrome in the middle. And then the two overriders where they poke through here, they will also have a little upright chrome on the front one as well, just to hide them away. And that's pretty much it. We got some overspray on the black areas where the tape, the tape's been on there for a few weeks so it started to dry and peel off and you can see it's blown through to the top. Try it on the back there as well. Trying to stick tape to mesh isn't, you know, but I can just brush over that by hand. So not bothered about that. But yeah, that's sort of the first look of what it's going to look like. I don't even know what it looks like. I can't decide. Somewhere between a Mark I Golf and a Vitesse. Obviously I'm going for the muscle car. Look, that is minus the grill, of course. I haven't put the grill in yet because I'm not putting the grill anywhere near that while the paint is still soft. So what I need to do now is leave it alone. Because the more you poke and prod at it, the more time you're going to have for problems. Aren't we, dog? Yes. You stay away from it. You stay away from my paint. Oh, we're doing that, are we? You tar. Yeah, leave it alone. Let a few days. Get it dry. And I'll come put the panel clips on. Do the bumper black, etc. But there we go. That is it. So I think we're on to a winner. Pretty happy with that.
as always, for my uh, amateur effort. I think it's all right. And that's what she looks like with the grill fitted. Still not entirely sold on the grill yet, I'll be honest. Which is strange, because that's the one thing I wanted to make. It's the grill on that charger, the 68 and the 70, that I really like. I think I need to recess the grill, drop it back a bit more. I don't know. It's a bit of a funny one. And then with the chrome strip. It's not too bad, I don't think. Pretty good reflection in it. Hello. Breaks it up a little bit and adds a bit of chrome. On the rear of the car, it's still got the original chrome bumper, so I wanted to tie in my new front with the back as much as I could. I didn't want it to look obviously like a different front end put onto a car. I had to try and, you know, do my best to make it look fitting. So, we're most of the way there now, to be fair. I've still got to tidy up some of the black paint where I've got a bit of overspray on it. Need to fit the side repeaters. I'm going to use some... Um, Black gunk out of the old gun, you know, can't think what it's called. Uh, like tiger seal, that sort of thing. I'll use some of that to stick all the lights in. The other little uh, marker lights and indicators need to be stuck in as well. And then the chrome trim I've got left will go onto the overrider fronts once it's fitted. And a little bit of tidying up the grill. Like I say, not entirely sold on my uh, slatted grill yet. I think it actually almost looks better as is. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see how it looks on the car. Unless I can find a way of splitting that grill down the middle so that I can make it half the thickness. And then it will recess itself back in. I like the recessed look that it has. And as soon as you fit that grill, you lose that recessed look. So I should have either recessed it more or made the grill nowhere near as thick. I don't know. To be fair, I can always come back and have another go, go at the grill another day, should I want. So there we go guys. We're most of the way there. Can't believe it's finally coming to an end. It's um, a bit weird. Still needs to be fitted properly, obviously with the hinges. I need to wire up all the lights and all the rest of that and wire that to the existing wiring somehow. So I haven't got to take apart the original wiring loom. I'll probably use some chalky blocks, you know, screw down terminals. One's big enough to put the original bullet connectors into, and then I can just poke the wires into the other side. That way I can strip them off, and, uh, you know. And as I said before, the few other bits I've got to do, sticking the lights in, a bit more chrome strip, tidy up the black paint, that kind of thing. But we are most of the way there. Um, comments seem to be overwhelmingly positive. I stick some of the pictures up online, just to let, you know, see what people do. You're never going to please everyone, I know that. I'm not out to change the world or to attempt to please everyone, because you never will. There'll always be some people that go, you've ruined it, it looks horrendous, what have you done? Fine, that's everyone's individual opinion, don't care. As I said from the beginning, everything I've done is completely reversible. I haven't changed, other than cutting a bit off the top of the overriders, I haven't changed it to such a manner that it can't be put back again. Still got the original bonnet, all the original lights, that can be, that we stored in my workshop, stick a blanket over it. And should anyone ever want the car, should I ever sell it, then I've got the original bonnet to go with it. Um, yeah, so I think that pretty much wrap it up for this one. Final video then. I, I thought it'd be like one or two videos when I first started. I thought I'd have wrapped up in a few months. It's been a long time. It's been almost nine months since I started doing this. Um, mon you know, moulding something yourself from fibreglass. Hang on, let me close that door. Moulding something yourself from fibreglass is... A lot of work, even if you're reasonably proficient at fiberglassing. I'm reasonably proficient at fiberglassing. I don't do it for a living. You know, I've just done it enough times to sort of know what I'm doing with it. And even then, being reasonably proficient, it's still a huge amount of work. You've got to do three of everything. 
you've got to make the original, your sculpt. Then you've got to make the mould to go over the sculpt. And then you have to make your final product on the inside of the mould. So it's it's a lot it's not like taking an existing bonnet, covering it in filler, carving it, and then using that bonnet on the car. You're just using that to make the mould. That original bonnet gets trashed, thrown away, and then you're you know, you're moulding from that. So it's a huge amount of work. Um but I'm pr I'm pretty happy. It's you know with what I'm capable of producing, which was never going to be amazing. Um, I think I think it's I think it's pretty good. Obviously, the final test will be when it's on the car. What does it look like? I think it will look pretty cool. And either way, it's staying on there. The amount of work I put into it, even if I don't like it for whatever reason, um, it's staying on there because it's been a lot of work. And of course, I still need to actually polish this one as well. Get the paint a little bit flatter. It's pretty good. But um, it is a little bit orange peely. Let's try and get in the light there so you can see it. To be honest, it looks like most new cars look. <laughs> if you ever look at a new car and you think, "Oh, a new cars are going to be sprayed perfectly flat," and they're not. They're <laughs> they're really not. They're surprisingly bad if you look at new cars up close. So that will get cut and polished just to get that paint nice and flat. Because you know, why wouldn't you? Um, and as I say, next video will be um, fitting it to the car, getting it up and running, and driving it around and get some nice B-roll of it, driving around and see what it looks like. So, anyway, I'm rambling. So thank you very much for all those that have watched so far. I do appreciate all the views. Um, like, as I've said before, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't want to be a YouTuber. I'll never be a YouTuber. There's people out there who do much better work than me, more entertaining and everything else. So I'm never, ever going to try and do that. Um, but I do this for my own benefit. I can look back when I'm 80 if I make it that old and go, oh, I was such a dick. Um, and for other people's benefit, if someone else is thinking about doing something like this, they might go, actually, you know, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to do it. Then they might see this and go, well, actually, if that guy can do it, then I can probably do it as well. So that's the ultimate aim, I suppose, is to inspire other people to have a crack themselves and just go, you know what? Bollocks to it. I'm going to have a go and see what happens. And even if it goes to shit, and it turns out terrible, you know, you've got a lot of learning experience you've had from that project. So there's always a benefit to it. So thank you all, as always, very much. I do appreciate it. I honestly do. Um, and stay tuned for final fitment, getting it driving and all the rest of it. It should be interesting. I'm hoping it's going to fit. I mean, I know it fits because I've had it on already in the previous video, but in my mind, I think for some reason now I've taken it off and painted it, it's not going to fit and it's going to be a nightmare. I'm going to scratch it, putting it on or something terrible. Or the first time I drive it down the highway, bits go flying off it or something. They won't, but you know, you know what it's like. Anyway, see you all next time. Take it easy.